How did Lindy from South Africa learn to speak over 12 languages? Well, I know the answer, and by the end of this video, so will you. Over the past few years, I have dedicated a significant portion of my time to learning uh, a lot of languages. Which ones? Well, we've got Afrikaans, her native language, French, Korean, Mandarin Chinese, Spanish, Tagalog, Vietnamese, and Japanese. Oh, and then there's Malay, Indonesian, Arabic, and Hindi, and Hungarian. Szia, Lindy vagyok. Ma akarok beszélni, hogyan tanulok magyarul, miért tanulok magyarul, és egy kicsit a nyelvtanulásról. Pretty cool. Now, that doesn't mean that I am fluent in all of them. There are some languages that I'm comfortable enough with to live in that country and not need English, but there are other languages like Hungarian, where there is just a very long road ahead of me. Now, in my series of method breakdowns about how some of the world's best language learners learn their languages, we've had a really big mix of characters. We've had, on the one hand, a, a real kind of in-depth, long, hard, arduous journey to fluency in one very difficult language. But then we've also had one guy who learned over 50 languages, you know, to a more kind of superficial level. Lindy, for me, is sort of somewhere in between. She is what I would think of as a professional polyglot, someone who kind of makes her life out of learning lots of languages very well. And so what we're going to be doing in this video is looking at, on the one hand, how she learns a new language and how interestingly that has changed, but also, particular to her, what does it take to learn and maintain so many languages? And as you'll see, it takes an awful lot. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Ollie Richards, and this channel is all about helping you learn a new language through the power of story, so you can become fluent faster and live your best life. And this includes telling the stories of particularly talented language learners like Lindy. So let's begin by taking a step back and ask, what did it actually take or feel like to think and live in so many different languages? I'm curious, what language do you think in? Is it your native language? Or do you, like me, compartmentalize your life in different languages? So I know for me, um, Afrikaans is my home language, and I pray in Afrikaans, because that's how I learned. But don't ask me to count in any other language than English, because English is, uh, you know, I took school in English. Um, when I stub my toe or trip, it's like Kamtagya in Korean. <laughs> I find that that's a very emotional language for me. My phone is set to Japanese. I, I dream in French or Spanish sometimes. Yeah, are you confused? Because sometimes I don't know what language to talk to myself in either. And don't get me started on answering the phone when I don't see who's calling. <laughs> you know, when we see successful polyglots, there's a temptation to kind of look at them and think, wow, isn't that cool? Look what they've achieved with their languages. I wish I had that. But what we don't see is everything that went into getting to that stage. And certainly this is the case with Lindy, where it was not always that way. So I grew up uh, very, very shy. I lacked confidence. If uh, past me was supposed to tell me now that I would be giving a presentation like this, I would not believe it. I was uh, completely zero confidence. I was also bullied in school. I moved around in a lot of different countries and it was difficult to make friends. Now, hang on just a minute. No real sense of home, difficulty making friends, feeling like an outsider. We've seen this before. I mean, it was kind of like running away. It was kind of like, I, you know, everyone has their own problems. And I just got this, I was like young and naive. I got this idea in my head. No, I didn't actually have so many local friends in my own language. So I did kind of think, well, maybe I can go to Spain and just start again over there. Interesting. I wonder where this is headed. And I thought that I didn't have anything valuable to say. I thought that nobody really cared about um, what I had to say. But really, language learning and languages changed my life. And uh, languages gave me a sense of purpose and identity and confidence. One of the most interesting things about doing these explorations into how different polyglots have learned their languages has been to discover this interplay between language and identity and how so many people turn to language learning in order to like fulfill some kind of need they have around around their, uh, some kind of confused or mixed identity uh, or or struggle as a teenager I, I certainly had this i thought it was just me I, it was just me who was a bit a bit different but it turns out 
it's not. And I think a lot of people grow up with this kind of experience, especially as, as teenagers, and that, that can lead to different things. You can turn to video games, drugs, food, like what, whatever. For Lindy in particular, she was moving around a lot. And this gave her a very unique opportunity to, to explore and get exposure to different languages and cultures. And I can really relate to this because for me personally, as a, as a polyglot, I, I ident identify with this, with being a citizen of the world, going to different countries, meeting people on their own terms, in their own language. And this is clearly how Lindy feels as well. And you can tell this from the confidence that you get in all of her fantastic videos. And listen to just how much this means to her. The more languages we speak, uh, the more identities we can flow in and out of. In Afrikaans, we say, so viel tala as jy kan, so viel male um, as jy man. And we actually got that from the Dutch. And it is a, so viel tala as jy kan, so viel male bin ik man. Uh, I don't really speak Dutch. That was probably very Afrikaans. So for those of you who don't speak either, it means something like, as many languages I can speak, so many times am I a person. It's difficult to know what lesson to draw from this for you. I, I do find it interesting that so many prolific language learners do come from some kind of background with an identity crisis of some kind. But then it's also true that there are plenty of perfectly well-rounded, happy teenagers who also do great things with languages. Yeah, I don't really know. But anyway, how did Lindy get here? How did she learn her languages and how does she maintain her abilities in so many languages? I have changed my method of studying for languages over the years a lot. Um, how I started learning Korean 10 years ago is completely different to how I'm learning Hungarian now. Because over the span of 10 or so years, I've realized what works for me and what doesn't. Where I used to memorize like vocabulary lists out of context and find like the 100 most common words in a language and just study those, now I sort of ignore that and I start taking conversational lessons, for instance, or I start reading articles a bit above my level because I'm learning stuff in the context of phrases and I'm learning stuff that I can really use in daily life rather than just learning words completely out of context from a list. So Lindy has changed her language learning method a lot in the last 10 years and this is completely normal. You see this a lot in the evolution of polyglots and it's interesting to note here because I think people often do get too hung up on the method, figuring out what's the best method to learn a language, you know, who's got the best method, but actually methods are always evolving. That's something for you to think about if you find yourself kind of pursuing one particular method in a very kind of dogmatic way. You know, it can evolve. What I think is more interesting in Lindy's story is her, how that evolved. So she used to memorize lists of vocabulary out of context, very kind of traditional learning method. And now she learns very much in context by doing things like taking conversational lessons, reading articles. And we saw this exact same evolution with Xiaoma, where he learned a lot of his initial Chinese with flashcards and spatial repetition, and then it kind of changed completely and went on a massive immersion binge. And I remember getting a lot of uh, people in the comments were kind of pointing out, were saying things like, well, that's kind of hypocritical because he learned his Chinese with in one way through flashcards, and now he's preaching a different way. But this is to miss the point because we all evolve, methods evolve. And as you learn more languages, I think you get a better understanding, a deeper understanding about the truth of what language learning really is. And it is interesting that most polyglots do have this general shift over time, over the years, from specific techniques like flashcards or lists of words or whatever, towards a more immersion-based approach or input-based approach. And there's a deep truth to be observed here about how language learning really works. And if you want to learn more about learning with immersion, do make sure you're subscribed to this channel because that's pretty much all we talk about. What I like to do is to try and think how do native speakers live? So the podcast they listen to is in their language, their phone, uh, you know, their search engine. If I have to look something up for work, why don't I do it in Spanish or Korean or French? Try to live like how native speakers do, uh, move away from those beginner resources and really use your language. You put, if you put yourself in situations where you use language, you'll actually learn very fast. What I want you to notice here is the attitude that comes with this advice that Lindy's giving. This is not just some kind of bland, yeah, study for 15 minutes in the evening type advice. This is an entire mindset that she is bringing to this. And it comes with this idea that if you want to learn to speak like a native speaker, then you need to live like a native speaker. And so she's asking herself these questions like, well, native speakers, what are the podcasts that they listen to? What language do they have their phone set in? What search engine are they using? 
So think about this, ma this mindset and attitude for yourself. Are you a passenger on the language learning journey, letting a teacher or someone dictate what you do and when? Or are you actually driving that train? Are you in control? So if you're trying to explain a concept to someone and you don't know the word for something, you can try to talk around it. And instead of saying, you know, uh, the gym, if you don't know the word for that, you can say uh, the place where people run and there are many people and it is in a building. And the person will go, oh yeah, it's a, it's a gym. And that's how you learn a new word. You're putting yourself in context and you're really using the language like native speakers do. And that's how people learn new, like advanced vocabulary in their language as well. It's really from exposure, interacting with stuff like how native speakers do, consuming the content in the language. I love this example of talking around something. It's a very specific technique, uh, it's also called paraphrasing. Uh, where you are kind of negotiating for meaning with the person that you're talking to. But but I want to come back again to, to what matters here, which is not that particular technique, but it's the mindset. Lindy's saying to herself, I'm going to use this language. I'm going to use it. And there's a very common misconception around learning through input or learning through immersion, which is this idea of, well, how do you go from understanding what you're reading or listening to to actually using the language and being able to speak it? Well, this is how. People often get stuck in, in study mode, never actually getting to use the language, but this is absolutely essential. You've got to use the language a lot. And isn't it fascinating how Lindy has evolved here from this shy teenager to a fearless speaker of so many different languages. I find this absolutely fascinating how language can empower you in this way. But what's the most interesting thing that you've taken from this so far? Let me know in a comment below. But anyway, all that speaking must be very difficult if you don't actually live in the country, don't you think? When we hear the word immersion, we usually think, okay, that means I have to go to the country and uh, just live there and then I'll be fluent. Absolutely not. There's really no um, necessity to go to another country. You can create an immersive language learning space for yourself in a specific language. As long as you dedicate enough time to lots of listening, reading, writing, and speaking, you don't even need to travel to that country and you will be able to learn it. So I have never lived in Korea, but when I was a high school student, now you'll know how old I am, this is from 2012, I decided to do an, um, what do you call it, a part-time job at a Korean restaurant in South Africa. I thought, let me um, earn a little bit of pocket money so that maybe one day I can travel to Korea, but also get some practice and opportunities to speak Korean. So I was not very good at Korean back then. My handwriting was atrocious, but here's a picture uh, from, I don't know, my phone was a brick back in 2012, but uh, I tried to copy down the menu and I remember I was taking orders and I would practice what I needed to say. Uh, so I was so nervous to speak to the customers. I had to practice line by line and ask them, what would you like to order? And it was very um, scary for me. But I knew that putting myself in a situation to hear Korean every day would really be beneficial um, to practicing the language a lot. So that was one example of immersion for Korean. Are you getting the mindset here? Again, it's the mindset. I want to learn this language, so I'm going to find a way. And if it takes, if like getting a job in a Korean restaurant is what it takes to practice in Korean, then I'm going to do it. I see this time and time again from, from successful polyglots. No excuses. Find a way. So ask us yourself, are you serious about language learning? Are your actions, do your actions, what do your actions say about you? Do your actions tell the story of a serious person who really wants to learn? What more can you do? Now this does sound like a lot of hard work doesn't it? A lot of dedication. But the thing about polyglots like Lindy, who are super successful with languages, is that they also find a way to make all this sustainable. And Lindy uses something called habit stacking to fit more language study into her day. Don't give yourself this strict guideline of, oh, I must do this. Rather give yourself maybe habit stacking. Like when I brush my teeth, I'm going to, to review the French vocabulary sticky notes I put. Or when I um, cook breakfast, I'm going to listen to this podcast or uh, every day I'm going to read one article. Give yourself these small actionable goals rather than saying study for X amount of hours. I know a lot of polyglots and this is something that they are all good at, fitting languages into their lives in creative ways. And I think it's interesting to note this and to recognize that learning doesn't have to always be study. You know, but I, I do also think that if you're learning your first language or you're new to language learning, 
then it is also very important to develop a, a certain discipline around actually studying the language. Because the, the big risk otherwise is that you kind of do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but you never get the kind of traction that actually can lead to massive motivation and progress in the first place. And this is why rule number eight of story learning is door closed, phone off. But the question here is, how do you live a life of languages? How do you make it part of your life so it doesn't become a struggle all the time? And this is how. And even if on your first foreign language, another way to look at this is just, well, how much more exposure could you be getting to your language by looking for ways to stack habits? But look, now, there's still this big question of, if learning one language takes such a long time, well, how on earth do you learn 12 languages? How is it possible? Well, one way is through language stacking. And what on earth is language stacking? And it is learning one language up to an intermediate or advanced level and using it as the language of instruction for another language. So I started learning Japanese using a Korean book over here. And after that, when I was comfortable enough to uh, speak Japanese, I started learning Spanish using a Japanese book as well. So here's an example of the Spanish book I have. It's written in Japanese and it teaches you how to write a diary in Spanish. And it's one of my favorite resources now to continue learning Spanish. So once you're comfortable in one language, try and use it to learn another. It'll help you keep the first language fresh and maybe if the languages are similar enough, even help you to learn faster. I understand that it can be bewildering to think about learning 12 languages. I mean, where do you get the time? But this is a great example of how language learning compounds over time. It gets easier the more languages you learn. And this could be because of uh, similar languages. So for example, if you're learning Japanese via Korean, you get a kind of concept shortcut because those two languages are very similar. So it just speeds up the learning process. Or alternatively, if you're learning, say, Spanish, via Japanese, those languages are very different, but you can actually keep one of your languages up actively while learning the other. And so when people ask, well, you know, how did you have the time to learn eight languages or 12 languages? Well, that is how it gets easier and it gets faster. And the last method I'll discuss is journaling. I love writing. I'm an introvert and a deep thinker. So for me to work through my problems is to write about them a lot. So I thought, well, if I write so much, why don't I try writing in another language? And the reason it was so beneficial for me is when I write in a different language, especially if I'm a beginner, there will be lots of times where I encounter words that I don't understand or don't know. I don't let that stop me. I continue writing. Maybe I'll write it in English, Afrikaans or Korean, that one word. And after that, I will look up the words. So it helps me learn new words just by writing. Here are some pages from my Japanese journals around 2014 and 2015. And I would write an entire page every single day. I try to write in a journal in one language every year. So, so far I've written in Japanese, Chinese, Korean, and Hungarian. And you can see, yeah, maybe there are some Korean or English words in between here just because it was faster. But what I tried to do is just force and push myself to use Japanese every single day. Did you hear what she said at the end there? I try to force and push myself to use Japanese every single day. And really, that says it all. You know, here in her journals, she's mixing English and Korean words in with the Japanese, but, but who cares? What's behind everything that Lindy's doing with languages here? And this is how she's not only been successful, but also kept it up, is this incredible mindset and attitude that she has which is to say, yes, I'm gonna find ways to integrate the language into my life in a fun, varied, creative way, but I'm also gonna bring a level of discipline and hard work. And it's that which, in my opinion, is the most important takeaway from all of this. You know, I always like to say that attitude trumps method every time. And I think Lindy could use a totally different set of language learning techniques or methods and still get exactly the same results. It's because of her passion for language and also that, that deep internal drive to learn, to connect with people, undoubtedly fueled by some difficult childhood experiences. 
that's helped her become so successful with languages and also inspire thousands of people around the world to learn too, which is so fantastic. Now, do you remember earlier how we talked about the fact that her language learning method has evolved and changed quite a lot over the years? Well, in this video, you'll see a really clear example of this. It's how one guy became fluent in Chinese, initially by starting with one method, but then going right to the other extreme. So head over and watch that video right now.